Hey everyone, in this video I'll be giving a short overview on how to build your initial team if you're first starting out in the game and how to diversify your roster. Before heading into the video, if you are a new player in the game, I highly recommend checking out the beginner's guide made by the Thornberry Troop. I will put a link to the guide in the video description. It's a very useful guide that provides a great overview on the basics and fundamentals of the game. This video will be covering or focusing strictly on building your initial party and how to diversify your roster so that you can start um, tackling Cosmos or Chaos content and possibly even some of the earlier Lufania stages. So starting out in the game, after you've cleared the beginner chapter and maybe one or two story chapters, you find yourself with a little bit of gems that you can start using to pull on some of the banners. And also, of course, depending on when you actually start the game, uh, sometimes throughout the year, the developers actually provide free first multi draws on the banners that you can fully make use to get yourself started. So starting off, what you want to think about is to build a core team of three party members that is well balanced and has roles that synergize or complement one another. So for example, you may want to have one party member focusing on DPS or dealing damage, a second party member focusing more on support, so boosting the party's attack and max brave stats and possibly a third party member who offers some other type of utility such as elemental enchant or imperil or perhaps a tank sort of character that can protect the entire party from hp attacks you can possibly also of course double up on certain roles such as having two damage dealers or two support characters but the crux of it is that you want a well balanced team of three and avoid having all three party members fulfilling the same role. So for example, having three damage dealers might, might sound like a good idea, but in practice, when you are facing tougher challenges, you'll find that um, your damage will lack because you, you don't have support characters in your party. So overall, you really want to start trying to build a core team of three that is well-balanced or well-rounded. Now, how, how do you do that? When you first start the game, you have access to a couple of banners and the banners that you have access to may be a bit different than what you're seeing here. The banners come and go based on the time of the year. But usually you have access to a couple of banners and you will also have access to the start dash banner, which is uh, specific for newcomers. Out of these banners, you want to focus only on one or two banners and pull for up to three characters to get as much of their kit as possible. On each banner, you can click on the draw info button on the banner that actually tells you what weapons are available. Overall, every character has 15 CP, 35 CP, EX weapons, LD weapons, and some characters also have BT or Burst weapons available to them. Starting off, it is very important to understand that for your core team of three, you do need to fully max and limit break or fully realize there are 15 CP, 35 CP, EX weapons and LD weapons. The Burst weapons at the start of the game, I feel is more of a luxury than a necessity. If you happen to pull the burst weapon or BT weapon while you're chasing one of the other weapons, then it's sort of like icing on the cake. But I highly recommend not chasing burst weapons if you already have all the other weapons. And that's because the draw rates of burst weapons are very small. Right? You only have 3% on for each 5,000 gems that you spend. Um, and you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you spend all your gems and still not uh, pulling the, the burst weapon. So don't go out of your way to score the burst weapon for the character. 
as far as the other weapons are concerned though they are all vital and you do need to max limit break all of the other weapons and fully upgrade them to the maximum level so that you can unlock their weapon passives for the character so which banners do you aim for at the start it's really up to you uh, but what i would recommend at least for you to consider is that um, when you look at the banners you realize that during um, the time that you're pulling there will be a few banners featuring a certain character's pt so at the time of making of this video i'm currently in x devs arc so you realize that on this banner you you see that x devs bt weapon is featured on this banner x devs bt weapon is featured uh, on this banner as well and also on this banner so what you want to consider is pulling on the banner that features the bt characters other weapons first so for example here x devs bt is featured across all but only this banner specifically has x devs other weapons featured so if you pull on this banner you can actually get x devs ld 15 35 cp and ex weapons now the reason why it might be a good idea to pull for the this specific banner is so that uh, eventually if you do end up pulling on one of the other banners and you happen to score the burst weapon at least it will come in good use because you will already have pulled and maxed out the burst character's other weapons beforehand do not only aim to pull one or two weapons for the character the weapon passives make a significant difference in the power level of the character and starting off it's important to focus as much as you can on a core team of three before you start diversifying your roster it may be very tempting to pull for other characters and in fact there's many other characters that you can pull for but it's always better to have a well-built team of three than to say have 10 characters that are only semi-built eventually though you will max out your core team of three and from then on you can start adding more and more characters to your roster but i'll touch more on that uh, in a little while Now the question that most beginners will probably have is that at this point how do you know what roles the characters will fulfill so you know if i look at x dev or if i look at karen or tancred on this banner how do i know whether they are a dps character a support character a tank character or, or what other roles do they have um, for this i would also recommend checking out the infographics on thornberry troops website and again the link will be in the video description they make very nice infographics for the characters that summarizes their kit as well as indicate what sort of role that character fulfills so always check this out before you make any decision to pull and this goes as well for any new characters that you want to pull so that you at least know or can make an informed decision whether or not that character will complement your roster well or not so coming back to building the first team of three so in this case if i decide that one of my characters i want to start off with is x dev because his bt weapon is featured across several banners uh, i'll start off pulling on this banner with him because it features all his other weapons as well and then i look at the other party members on this banner itself so the good thing on, about this banner is that karen is also featured and all of his weapons are featured here including his LD weapon, his AX weapon 15 and 35 CP so while I'm pulling for x Def, I will probably also score Kieran's gear and Kieran is actually quite a decent support character as well and this means that if I pull on just this banner alone I will already score gear for a DPS character in x Def and a support character in Kieran so this just leaves the third party member you can make do with tancred on this banner uh, he's also featured here 
um, and he is usable in Cosmos and maybe Chaos content, but usually the third character on the banner, in this case uh, Tancred, tends to be a little bit outdated. And if you still have resources left over after you have pulled for gears for say XDev and Karen here, you may want to consider a third party member from a second banner. And for that, you want to choose a banner that has a character that really complements your first two characters well. So for example here, if I've already pulled for XDev and Karen, maybe one good example here would be this banner with Afmao, uh, because if I happen to score VV, it's also quite a good option to have as a third party member. Um, and at least I'll be I'll be having options of either putting in Afmao as a support or VV as a damage dealer for the third party member based on the needs of the stage. But really, I, I don't think it's a good idea to split your gems and tickets over too many banners. Again, try to focus more on one or two banners uh, for the main reason that you really want to try to pull as many weapons as you can for that character. As far as 15 CP and 35 CP weapon goes, um, you can actually also redeem for some of them through the weapon token exchange. So if you go to item exchange and you go to the weapon token section, um, after a while, you would have saved some weapon tokens and you can use that to redeem uh, 15 and 35 CP weapons for any character. So right here is the token exchange and you can exchange 10 weapon tokens for any 15 CP weapons and 25 weapon tokens for any 35 CP weapons. So that's also another option other than pulling on the banner. Once you have all the weapons, you then want to use power stones or, or duplicates of the weapons to max limit break them. And typically you need to limit break three times in order to reach the maximum capacity of the weapon. So for example, if you take a weapon here, uh, if you take any weapon and you go to the limit break, you realize that um, you can use duplicates to limit break the weapon. And for each duplicate you use, you realize that it, the indicator on the rainbow goes up by one. And then you can also use power stones to limit break the weapons. So for all the weapons on the character, and this includes 15 CP, 35 CP, EX and LD weapons, you want to max limit break them um, and then level them using orbs to the maximum level. So after pulling for on those one or two banners, you come across sort of like a party setup similar to this. So for example, if I pull for XDev and Karen, uh, and maybe I pull for Afmao as the, on the second banner, I, I may get a party such as this. And I will also have fully upgraded and maximally broken their weapons uh, using weapon tokens, power stones, or duplicates that I come across the way. Now that the whole process of upgrading may take some time because obviously starting out, you won't have any power stones or weapon tokens, but that, that's the whole crux of the game. You, you want to spend your beginning time of the game or time inside the game fully upgrading your three characters. The same goes for the armor as well. However, the armor isn't as important as the weapons. In this game, the defense stat is largely irrelevant. It doesn't matter whether the armor is at level 1 or the armor is at level 50. The whole point of having armors equipped is to actually raise the CP of the characters because most of the CP comes from the weapon, uh, from the armor equipped. So if you have enough CP to equip all the passives on the, the character, then you don't actually need to start upgrading the armor. Uh, eventually, you do need to get better armors for the characters to raise the CP ceiling. And in this game, there's also the high armors, but I think that that's really probably for another time. The high armors uh, requires high armor tokens for to be redeemed. And you can only get those tokens if you complete end game content, which is Lufenia or Lufenia Plus. I, I, they are not really necessary. You can make do without them. 
the, the most important is just focusing on having enough armor uh, to fulfill the CP needs of your characters. So after you've pulled on the one or two banners and you've gotten the weapons for your core team of three and you've spent some time upgrading them, what you want to do is then start leveling the crystal level and character levels of your core team of three. Every character starts off at a crystal level of one and you need their corresponding crystal colors to start upgrading their crystal levels. Fortunately, crystals in this game is extremely easy to get. What you want to do is head over to the events tab and there at the bottom you'll see cycle quests um, and you can then start farming the relevant color crystal for your character. You want to upgrade the crystal level of your character to the maximum and this can be anywhere from 70, 80 or 90 depending on the character that you have. And as you upgrade their crystal level, you then start unlocking higher character level for the character. Character levels are also extremely easy to level. Um, you can just head over to the Golden Cactus and farm the highest level of Golden Cactus. And if you happen to get lucky um, and see a flowering Golden Cactus, it provides a lot of Jill and a lot of experience and you'll hit the max level extremely quickly just doing this. You can also use Chocobo Feathers given free in the game to provide free experience to the characters. Uh, but really, just doing a couple of um, cycle quests, Golden Cactua will give you all the Jill and experience you need to fully level your characters. Okay, so next up would be to level the characters uh, summon bots and also character bots. Uh, I'll start off first with the summon bots here. So every character can level their summon bots um, right here. So every summon has a World of Illusions ultimate. And if you, for example, if you head to World of Illusions ultimate for Ifrit. So right here, every World of Illusions ultimate will have the corresponding summon on some sort of platform and there you see a challenge from the summon in this case Ifrit and each time you complete this you will gain uh, points towards the character uh, summon boards. I currently have all the summon boards maxed and once maxed um, you see a logo of M on the summon board logo on the character and that indicates that all summon boards have been maxed. At the start of the game, what you want to do is do the challenge from Ifri, challenge from Shiva, all the challenge from the summons for the characters and start leveling their summon bots. So if you head over to the training bot section of the enhancement screen, so in this case, for example, I'll show Karen's one. Where is my Karen? Here it is. So. If you go to the character, you realize that uh, they have 10 summon bots in total. And when you farm the challenge from summon stages, you will start getting points towards the summon bot. You can double or triple these points if you also use the Tome of Training, the, the books that provide times 2 or times 3 experience. And this significantly hastens the, the process of farming the summon bot points. So it all looks like this. You need 6,500 points to master each summon board. And you roughly get 8 to 900 points for one run. And you can double or triple the points if you use the corresponding experience book uh, to farm. So it doesn't actually take too long. And again, it will take some time because farming the summon boards requires stamina points. And stamina points are only gradually uh, replenished throughout the day. At the start, what you really want to do is also start using your stamina points potions or SP potions. There's really no point in hoarding them and I think the best time to use is actually at the start when you need to master quite a lot of summon bots as well for the characters. Summon bots make a huge difference as you can see. Each summon bot has a lot of corresponding stats as you unlock each node. 
and imagine if you actually fully master 10 summon bots the corresponding stats that you get is huge so it makes the character significantly stronger as you master the summon bots mastering summon bots also unlocks certain summon passives so for example here i've actually unlocked for example if we attack up for karen and he gets a boost of 10 percent to his attack while his hp is at least 80 percent of max so you can imagine unlocking all these summon passives also provide another level of boost to the character which makes a big difference i just want to touch very quickly on character bots as well every character also has so-called character bots that you can upgrade on the same page as the summon bots so the place where you upgrade the summon bots at the top you see a giant crystal and that gives you access to the character bots you unlock the character bots by max limit breaking their weapons so at this stage uh, assuming that you've pulled their weapons you've max limit broken them and upgraded them to the max you will then unlock their corresponding character bots you get the points to upgrade the character bots as you complete events so as long as you just play the game you will get enough points there are things that can give you more points so for example buying the mock pass doubles the amount of points that you can get per event but really i think that's a personal choice to make because the mock pass requires um, spending money in the game and may or may not be ideal for anyone so you will get enough points eventually to upgrade all the character bots and as you do events and get your character bot points you want to spend all these initial points upgrading again your core team of three so again here as far as character bots go you want to be investing the same principle as their weapons their armors and summon bots as in you want to spend them all only on your core team of three until your team of three is fully built All right, so eventually, after you spend quite a bit of time at the start of the game investing in your core team of three, so you, you spend your gems and tickets pulling on the one or two banners where their weapons are featured, you want to start um, unlocking their armors and redeeming their, their certain armors for them to increase their CP limit, and then you want to raise their crystal level, character levels, and spend stamina points on the summon boards as well as the enhancement points from events on the character boards but eventually after some time you max out your core team of three with this team of three as long as they are well balanced you should be able to complete all the story chapters including hard mode and you should be able to complete cosmos or chaos fights you may also be able to complete some of the earlier Lufania stages but as far as Lufania stages are, con are concerned um, Lufania and Lufania Plus are end game stages so they require quite a bit of um, I guess study, research and preparation to go in but having said that you know considering it's end game it will eventually come and who knows maybe in the future I might make a video on that Coming back to this, once you've built your core team of three, what you want to do next is then start diversifying your roster. So you want to start adding a fourth, fifth or sixth character that is viable in your roster so that depending on the stage, you can then swap out the characters that will do best or will handle the stage mechanics best. So for example, if this is my core team of three, what I'm currently missing here would be a tank character to protect the party so maybe in some more difficult stages where the bosses do a lot of heavy hp attacks this party may not be able to make it um, and you know i may be then be on the lookout for the next banner that may feature a tank character or maybe you know i might want to have a character that has elemental enchant or imperil so that i can hit the boss for elemental weakness damage so in that case, maybe my fourth character might be someone who, who fulfills that role. Or maybe, you know, I want someone with some other type of utility, such as providing heals to the party or being able to grant certain buffs 
or clans divas from the party, so on and so forth. Um, as you diversify your roster, always be on the lookout for roles and utility that you currently do not have because this normally will add the biggest value to your roster. The game does value a diversified roster because for one thing, of course, over time, power creep is a thing and you may want to update your core team of three to more uh, more meta characters or more recently released characters but also the game has stages that requires diversified characters so for example dimensions n or abyss perfectum which uh, has certain requirements inside that um, you have an easier time meeting if you have a diversified roster and also of course certain stages have certain mechanics that uh, would make it would, that you will have an easier time if you have certain characters in your roster however again I really want to stress that it's always important to start off with a core of three and each time you add a four, fifth, six, or and so on character, you want to fully build that character up and this includes all the weapons, the armor, the summon boards, the character boards and so on until the, that character is fully built. If you only build the characters halfway, Sure, you can also use them in some content, but you realize that you, you may struggle when you come to higher level content because your character is not yet fully built. So always try to invest and fully build characters as you diversify your roster. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope this video has been somewhat helpful and informative. As always, if you enjoy the content, do leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It really helps a lot. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.